YouTube, this is Shirley426, and today we have something interesting to review. This is the, how should I say this, this is the Terminus Type R909 from Eureka 7. Now the Eureka 7, not, it's uh, it's one of those uh, mecha anime that not many people actually talk about, and surprisingly, Bandai did actually make a model kit from the series. Now there's only three as far as I know, and this is being one of them. And I've seen this at the shop for quite some time now, but I have never seen a review of it up to this point. Well, technically, uh, there was a review. It was just that I wasn't sure. It, it was a very old review, and there were some elements that I wasn't really, you know, happy about the review. So here we have more of an updated review. Now, as far as I know, this kit it was made in 2005, so it is. It has. It does not have most, you know components or elements of what a modern kit would have. Number two, this kit is really sticker heavy. Well, not as bad as Nirvash because I heard like the Nirvash is like on a whole new level on sticker level. But this one, after applying everything, it's not that bad. But of course, uh, if you're going to color most of the sticker parts, you're going to need a lot of skill or at least it's going to be tricky to get the exact color for these. Alright, so let's get on to the reviews. So first of all, what you get, of course, is obviously the main um, LFO, because uh, in the series, these mechs are called LFO, which stands for Light Finding Operation, which is kind of odd, but still. So you get the main LFO. This was, uh, in, the, was in the Gecko, used by Holland himself. And yeah, so you get the main LFO, and then you get the two blades, which are actually on the arm, stored in the arm. And then this one is one of the unique ones, where it actually has like some sort of cannon on its uh, back. Most of the LFOs we see from the series don't really have a built-in weapon other than like the ones on the arms. Okay, so other than that, what you get is this, this board stand. So in the Eureka 7 series, all the mechs fly around about 90, let's say 95% because there's this, there's technically one slash two exceptions, but yeah. Um, most of the LFO mechs ride these boards to fly around, so yeah. And they give you they give you an extra or interesting stand, and then you get you have all these holes so you can change the position on where you want to put the feet on, which I'll get into that later. And then some leftover pieces. Well, there's only one or few leftover pieces. Number one is this. Oh, sorry about that. This is basically the main connector for the cannon that's on the back. Uh, since you get two of the same plates, you have one left over. Nothing too special. And then here we have the some left or polycaps, one neck joint, and then one G polycap, and then another L. And then finally here is the sticker sheet. So yes, that this is kind of a lot, but I heard the Nirvash has even more. Well, considering like the amount, this is nothing compared to the uh, Lancelot uh, Conquest as well. But yeah, these are kind of necessary unless you have the exact same color as the the model kit or the same pink slash purple it's not going to be easy to color them but yeah I did use all of them and I will try to point out what part is a sticker alright now let's get on to the review so now I'm pretty sure some of you guys are upset because I haven't been reviewing many Gunpla kits uh, I'll get into that later because I was just basically preparing for something and there's a lot of stuff going on with me right now which to the point where I'm having a hard time trying to be staying calm and focused Okay, so I'm doing my best, but yeah, I'm like re really this close into breaking apart. Okay, so let's start with the head as usual. Now, the, uh, you actually really do like the head of the of this. It's very different, but obviously it's very sticker heavy. So, um, actually, I'll change the angle of the camera first. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, uh, on the head, the section, the this purple and gray section on each side is a sticker. And then these green sections on the eyes are stickers. And then you can see this back section is also a sticker. The top section is a sticker. This purple this purple ring I'm actually talking about is slash pink. And then this side is obviously a sticker. And you might have noticed that each antenna slash fin are at different lengths. That's the way how it is. I did not break anything for the record. But other than that, the articulation for the head is okay. It can go down that much. Well, not too much, but and up a little bit. And then 360 twist should be possible, but uh, the plastic is kind of stiff, so be careful not to break anything. Because uh, like the Gurren Type 02, this kit is overall like has this gloss coating overall on the overall pieces. 
Okay, and now let's get the body. That black section I just panel lined because it kind of looked empty. And this is a section where the pilot should be, and this should not be full per, uh, pink as well. There should this is like the cockpit where there should be more of a glass kind of thing. But two sides of five kit, less color separation, and oh well. And you might have noticed that the head is actually falling apart. So, um, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. Um, I don't know what just happened, but the head kind of got detached. Not um, Basically, there was like a huge gap that just it just happened there. I don't know why that happened, but I'm back with the head. So as you can see, uh, I forgot to mention that the head was actually on a peg, not on a ball joint. So maybe I guess that's why I did move it 360, but something kind of bothered it, and hence it got detached. And I should mention this. I'm not sure if this is still an issue, but I've read a lot of like issues regarding the Eureka 7 model kits where uh, most of the parts that don't fit together. Um, I don't know if that's that was true because uh, I've only seen one person actually say that. So yeah, but for me, every part actually snap fit really well to the point where you should not make any mistakes. Yeah, just I want to say that. Okay, so on the back, there's nothing too special as I mentioned. Full pink and then some panel lining and this green section over here is actually a sticker as well and then the cannon moves pretty well because it's on a peg and it can move up and down a little bit and then 360 twist should be possible if you know your way around so yeah now it's funny uh, this thing really doesn't use this cannon that often the only time I actually remember seeing it use this more often was at the end of the series before it got destroyed and everything being a sticker you can see it's like about to peel off here and there Okay, the main body, the front section here, uh, the, the the front lights, they're all stickers. The silver se section is a sticker, and then on the, on the side section, not the gray, this is a whole gray piece, but this purple section, or pink section, is uh, a sticker on each side. And then this, I could have I could have pretty much taken everything, but this one was like the biggest, biggest sticker I've ever seen, or like the one that I could not stand, but I had no choice to use, is this purple, or I mean pink section on the bottom. Now this entire whole piece is supposed to, well the bottom section or half of the piece is supposed to be gray. This section you see right over here, this pink section is an entire sticker, a very large sticker. Behind it should be like a, a gray piece or a white piece or something like that. Uh, and you have to cover up the front part entirely. And I really did not like that but I think I did an okay job for now but I really wish I had the paint for this one. Okay, and yeah, so most of the stickers takes a lot of part in, on the body and the head. So other than on the arms, legs, there's not much stickers. Okay, now let's look at the, I'm going to move this here. Now let's get the shoulder armor, um, or the shoulder movement. Now despite being a 2005 kit, it does have actually a, a good range of mo motion. It can go front that much, back that much. So you have a good, a good amount of range. And then um, the arm can move to the side a little bit. So it, the arm, the joints are very stiff, so be careful regarding this. So the shoulder can move up, upwards 90 degrees or maybe a little bit more. And depending on how much uh, space you have on the joints, you can move about the arm to 90 degrees to the side. And then here we have the blades that are stored into the arm. That white section you see is a sticker. And then, oh, sorry about that. You only get a 90 degree bend or less than 90 degrees depending on how you look at it. But you do get a 360 twist on the uh, 360 twist on the arm but of course you're going to need to take this thing out so you can just pull it out but sometimes it doesn't work that well but it will pop out like that and then you can now twist the entire arm 360 oops 360 and the lower the lower arm itself 360 as well the hands are you only get these open white hands and on the inside you have these pegs going on here what they are for is that these pegs are to meant to hold the blades like this which is I know it's very dumb, but oh well. Um, yes, in the series, like these are like the mi the main weapons of most LFOs, where they would slash through their enemies on the sky. Uh, granted, there are military LFOs which actually carries like missile launchers and machine guns, but other than that, the civilian ones, the pr the only weapon they pretty much have are these kind of blades. And your hands are your ball jointed hands, so yeah. Okay, I think we did, we're done with the arm. Now let's get the main waist section, or actually the main body, I forgot to mention. Now, um, there is a bit of ab crunch, that which is kind of surprising for this year. And then the body should be able to move 360 with no issue at all. 
Now I do want to mention that you have to be careful with the shoulder uh, movement, especially when you're moving the shoulder up and down, because this part is actually pretty stiff to the point where you might break it if you don't, or if you're not careful, or if you're not thinking and trying to do this, you're gonna, you might break it. Okay, and then on the waist section or slash crotch section, this gray section is a sticker. This gray section is a sticker. Those, those ones were not too bad. And then the legs, we have a kind of a side swivel going on here, but it's not. It doesn't really move that much. Uh, but the main connection is a ball joint, so it can move forward more than 90 degrees since there's no front skirt or back skirt blocking its way. Uh, same, and this should go also the same for the back as well. And then to the side, not so much because once again, ball, main ball joint connection. Um, and we have this part which is pretty much a side skirt, but you can see there's a, these are wheels. And they don't actually spin, they're mostly like a part of a wheel. so. It doesn't really spin, and you might wonder why they, this thing has wheels here and there. It's because uh, the LFOs. Not, I don't think not. I don't think every LFO can do this, but most of the LFOs we see in the series can turn into like a car mode. Yes, it sounds silly, but yeah, it can turn into some sort of vehicle mode. Not a flying vehicle, but a ground usage vehicle, as far as I can tell. Uh, so yeah. And these are just on pegs, so no need to worry. And here are more wheel parts here and there. And this one does not even spin. This is just like a half of a wheel to make it look like it's on there. Uh, and then for the bend, it can go about 90 degrees to this, about 90 degree bend, which is fine. I'm not too picky about that. And then your feet are your ball jointed feet. And then we have these wheels that do not spin, but they don't really hinder that much. And under the feet, you have these poly caps. Now, what you these are what they're meant for is that you have to pull these out. Come on. Yeah, they usually come out a little bit easier, but yeah, you're supposed to pull these out and reveal these pegs. Uh, same goes for the other side. Okay, there we go. And then what you're supposed to do is it, is to attach it onto these holes. So unless you've done surf uh, surfboarding or skateboarding, you know like where to put the feet. As for me, I I am a very uh, I'm a person who is not really into sports, so I'm not really sure like what position is the correct position. So yeah, these are what they're meant, meant for. So yeah, as you can see, the base, the articulation is very basic, and it's kind of sticker heavy on the top. But overall, it's an okay kit. I mean, uh, it's a, it's an interesting kit that you might want to try out at least one time, except for the Nirvash, and let, because that that is one kit pretty much everybody who has tried told me not, like, don't even try to. Okay, so now one issue I've heard some from. Uh, from some people, which I actually actually did experience that you're supposed to plug these pegs into these holes, but they do not fit. So uh, what I suggest you do is that now um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I suggest you kind of like cut off the the edges of, of the end tip of the poly cap because uh, as far as I could tell by observation was that the peg on the top was a little bit too big to the point where it would not allow the entire peg to go inside the hole. So after that, I I cut off a few pegs and it started working pretty well. So I'm just gonna plug it in here, and then maybe this one here. Yeah, as I can, as I, so the ball jointed feet are very helpful at this point. But let's just say uh, you're just trying to put a generic pose onto this uh, model kit as it's, it's surfboarding on the sky. So this is what you do: you just plug in the holes in the okay or area you think, and then on here we have this latching system where uh, you just need to plug it in. Come on, and then lock it into place. And there you go, you have a flying mech and a board. So, and then you also get these white pieces to basically change positions just in case, uh, in order to just maintain balance, which is, I actually understand why this thing is here. And also, what you can also do is that, I'm gonna take this, take this actually. And then what you can do is, it's not easy to do this, but you can also change the position uh, of the angle of this as far as I can tell but this thing does not come out that easily so you can see this thing has like these uh, teeth here going on and then there's these small pegs so you can actually change the position uh, of the angle from left and right or you can also do this you can change the it's the same mechanic but yeah you have to take this part out which does not come out that easily uh, this time it actually came out easily but yeah you can change the like exact angle you can make it straight or if you can you can make it go up or down a little a lot more so you have a lot of options with this but i i think having one of those roll down she 
uh, stands might be a little bit more easier because it's really annoying to adjust every time to time. And that's pretty much it for the review. So the best way I can say that is this kit was okay. For a 2005 kit, I would definitely try maybe the yellow one. It was the two-seater version. I might try that, but yeah, it was a. I was expecting something a little bit worse, but what I got was actually pretty good. I mean, other than the stickers that are, are a ton on the head, um, I had really no issues with this uh, kit at all. I mean, uh, the rumors regarding that some parts don't fit together, I'm not sure what happened with them but yeah I, I did not have that issue so if you're curious you can you're willing you're okay it's okay to try but just expect a lot of stickers or just expect a lot of limitations or missing elements compared to modern kits and i'm pretty sure some of them are some of you guys are actually wondering like how big these things are because i've noticed is that on the model kit they did not mention any skill regarding this so here's a typical HG kit so you, this kit is actually a lot taller um, than a typical HG 12144 scale kit and I still think I'm kind of amazed that this thing did not get a robot dodge treatment considering how often we saw it in the series uh, and yet sure it got destroyed and yet we get the the devil fish as a robot dodge figure retail version so you might you will see this uh, review in the future but for now that's it pretty much it for this uh, review. So anyway, thank you for watching the review of the Terminus Type R909 review. Uh, once again, it's kind of sticker heavy on the body and the head, but other than that, it's a very interesting, fun kit to build. Um, and yeah, if you're curious, you're w it's okay to try. And I'm I'm pretty sure I pointed out all the stickers, but if there are any other stickers I did not point out, please let me know. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching the review. If you guys got any more questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time!